Welcome to the Town Board Workshop and Public Hearing, Thursday, November 2nd. Please rise and salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Emergency exits are to my right, behind our town attorney, and also the door you entered. Roll, please. Councilman Zelango, noted as absent. Councilman Morris. Here. Councilman Gutierrez. Here. Councilman Doyle. Here. And Supervisor Purdy. Here. Make a motion to open the public hearing to extend the Cold War veterans' exemptions. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Is there any public comment on the exemption? No. Yeah, I move to close the public hearing for the Cold War veterans exemption. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, it would be resolution number 54. Adopting proposed law number three of 2017 entitled a local law to amend local law number two of 2008 to extend the Cold War veterans real property tax law exemption. Whereas section 458B of the New York real property tax law provides an exemption from taxation to qualified residential real property owned by Cold War veterans and or qualified owners for a period of 10 years, provided municipalities adopt a local law authorizing the same. Whereas pursuant to local law two of 2008, the town board of the town of Amenia adopted a local law establishing an exemption from real property tax for Cold War veterans in accordance with section 458B of the New York RPTL and whereas recent amendments to section 458B of the New York RPTL provide that municipalities may adopt a local law providing that the exemption authorized by this section shall apply for qualifying owners of qualifying real property for as long as they remain qualifying owners without regard to such 10-year limitation. Whereas the town board desires to extend aforementioned exemption in accordance with the statutory amendments to section 458B of NY RPTL, which became effective on September 12, 2017. Whereas on October 5, 2017, the town board adopted a resolution scheduling a public hearing on the proposed local law for November 2nd, 2017, in accordance with the requirements New York State Municipal Home Rule Law. Whereas the town board held the duly noticed public hearing on the proposed local law on November 2nd, 2017, and closed the hearing on that date. Whereas this is a type two action under State Environmental Quality Review Act, and therefore not subject to review under SEEKER. And whereas pursuant to Municipal Home Rule Law 20, the proposed local law attached here to as Exhibit A, sat in its final form upon the desks or tables of the town board members at least seven calendar days, exclusive of Sunday prior to its final passage. Now therefore be it resolved that the town board adopts local law number four of 2017, entitled a local law to amend local law number two of 2008, to extend the Cold War veterans real property tax law exemption. Be it further resolved that a copy of local law number four, 2017, duly certified by the town of Amenia, town clerk shall be filed with the New York State Secretary of State on the appropriate form within 20 days of the adoption of this resolution. Be it further resolved that this resolution shall take effect immediately. I make that motion. Second. Supervisor Perotti? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. And Councilman Morris? Yes. I make a motion to open the public hearing for the 2018 preliminary budget. Second. I changed my mind. <laughs> I have to say something about procedure. Although I don't have a substantive comment about the budget, I am worried uh, about- We haven't finished our motion yet, so 
please wait a minute till we finish our procedure. Make a motion to open the public hearing for 2018 preliminary budget. I believe you second it. Roll, please. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? No. Okay, go ahead, Sharon. Okay. Um, historically, there has always been a copies of the budget available at the town meeting when this is discussed, and it is something we really have to have for the benefit of the public. We have them, Sharon. <laughs> Even if we don't have comments, because we have to keep that as part of our citizenship records for the future, and uh, therefore, I thank you for finding them. No, um, just for the public to be aware, at our last meeting, they were distributed and they were on the table. Since then, this room is used for multiple meetings. I have one extra. And. Um, so we cleaned up the off. We cleaned up this room. It's one more if anybody Somebody needs it. It's uh, right here. For the They've been made available in the town clerk's office since they were handed to me on October. Is there any public comment on the budget? Wayne. Good evening, Board Wayne Uvard. Um, I'm glad to see there's copies. Uh, as a veteran, I certainly want to thank you for um, extending the Cold War vets exemptions. Uh, I think I was supervisor in 08 when we first set that up, so it's nice that they, they decided to change it from the 10 year to, to continuing. As far as the budget goes, um, how many budget meetings have you had? One. Did you meet with department heads? I did. You did? Mm-hmm. I guess I'm not a department head anymore. I had the, I met with the department heads. I had any questions about their worksheets. Oh. <laughs> okay. I didn't have um, any. Yours was pretty clear. Okay. Um, normally in years past, we used to go through the budget line by line. I don't see that happening anymore. But I have a, I did get my copy from Don Marie. Um, I think it's rather poor that you had one meeting. Was there a quorum there? No. <laughs> so really you didn't have a, you've not had a budget meeting. No. So I guess when, <laughs> I'm not trying to be picky, Victoria, but when I asked if you had a budget meeting, you said yes, but. Well, I scheduled a budget you meeting. Scheduled a meeting, but you didn't, okay. Um, That's my, not saying we won't be meeting between now and adoption. Well, okay. Um, I did notice under, uh, under uh, revenues, uh, the building permits, uh, I, I knew last year, I mean, I don't have a crystal ball, but I knew when you went to the 200,000, uh, that was way, way high. So I'm glad that you dropped it down to a more reasonable um, revenue figure. I'm just curious, and I'm not sure how you worked out salaries, both elected and appointed people. There appears to be discrepancies. Did you use a basic one or, how did that work? I'm, I'm, I am confused with these. It's 1% uh, for employees that have been here over a year, except the only um, officials that I did not add the 1% to was the assessor and the highway superintendent. Okay, well, that's why it didn't work out. Oh, okay. Um, I'll go with my, my line here. Um, yeah, my assessor line, uh, it went up $55. And I can't figure out how that works. Because, huh? yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I pushed for Donna, and if I had had a meeting, I would have brought it up. But um, we've had many, much more work 
in the assessor's office, uh, basically due to silo ridge. I have my numbers somewhere, what we did from, what the actual numbers of parcels went from 1788, 1788, we're up to 2041. That's an extra 140 some, 150 parcels. There was a lot of work. I asked for a, a decent percentage last year for Donna Morrison. She's probably the longest term uh, um, appointed employee in town hall. And to see a $55 there is kind of, uh, 55, well. what are you talking about, 55? If you look at the individual lines. Yeah. Uh, account support went up. I'm talking to personal well, services. What about the personal services? The only, the only people that are in personal services that got an increase were Donna and John Lloyd. So that looks like it's $55. Well, it's 1%. I can go well, back, I can go back and check it. I, I, I wish you would. Um, what's, uh, I'm on page two, fiscal agent fees. Can I ask what that is? Um, that's the fees that um, are part of the payments we have to make for our debt. For your what? For our debt. Um, oh, debt. It's a, it's a separate. Oh, oh that a, okay, okay. Like, like for the I never, landfill. Okay. Okay. Our municipal accountant said we need to break it out when we haven't broken it out before. That's why it's a new line. Okay. And just to note, the personal services line is a 1% increase. That is $55. That sounds about right. $55 is? That's 1%. It's 1%. It's actually slightly over. It's 60 cents higher than 1%. I'll check that. Um, I'm on page three. The engineering line. Last year it was 25. You went down to 15 and on the ten tentative now this one, you've got it down to 10,000. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll bring that up. I thought we were trying to use some of that money for the uh, kitchen. If I jump to the kitchen line on page five, mm -hmm. you went from 10,000 to zero. Right. Right. Um, you came to our kitchen committee meetings mm -hmm. um, fully in favor of this project fully saying that you're going to help us out. We've got a community-minded board committee. I don't think you could ask for better people. We've been working hard on this. And you it's have and you have $28,000 in an account for the project this, plus there's 10,000 in the engineering for to get to, you through to the To do this project, we need $100,000. Well, uh, and, uh, well, there's no way you can put hundred thousand dollars. I didn't in ask for hundred. I did ask. I did ask for fifty. No, but that, not even fifty if we're going to well, stay under the cap. Well, anyway, you you went to absolutely zero. So you expect the committee to work, and if we go out for grants and they'll say, "What's the town committed?" and I say, "Well, the budget has zero, that doesn't look very well for grants. And it's well, just, we uh, can tell them that we have. $28,000 put aside for it. Well, and, and the project's going to, how can you do it if it's going to cost 100000 can you? How can you go forward? If we don't you have the have, money, we have, don't have the support from the town board or support in the budget, it, it's very difficult to, um, to operate. Uh, if I can maybe just summarize some of the conversations we've had previously sure. as the town board regarding the kitchen. Uh, the town board did agree. There was consensus to support the project mm -hmm. um, by way of uh, funding the grant writing process, assisting with that. Um, and then we did also generally express uh, support across mm -hmm. the board for grants that might involve some matching. Um, but there was, uh, there was not a consensus among the board to just continue to have a line item in the budget um, each year. That was just the a summary of conversations. Okay. That line. I had, I've been thinking about this meeting for the last few days and um, what came to mind was vision. 
And obviously, as a business owner, you have to have vision. You have to plan. I remember back when I first started on the board, 96, 97, we didn't have cell phone service. And I suggested putting a cell phone tower up at the waterworks. Well, people were up in arms. Oh, we can't do that. We're going to destroy the hillside, blah, blah, blah. We didn't have cell phone service. We had deputy sheriffs come up to me and say, if they have a problem on 22, they have to drive up to the gas station to find a pay phone to contact Poughkeepsie. Luckily, I was able to convince people that we needed that cell phone, cell tower. When we moved into this building from the firehouse, I had division. I walked by this building. I went to school here. I saw it empty. I saw the vision. And I'm so proud of what's, you know, we're using a gym, we're using the auditorium, we're using a building. It's fabulous. I've been, I was thinking about disasters that are coming. I've seen flooding here. Um, 1955, I go back a ways. The bridge at Troutbeck was overflowing. If you look at that river, that's probably about 20, 22, 25 feet from the river up to the bridge. The South Amenia Bridge, the same thing. You couldn't cross those. Just happens that today's Poughkeepsie Journal editorial, lessons from Sandy don't come easy. I'm going to quote just for a minute, and please bear with me. Five years ago, Superstorm Sandy walloped on the East Coast, devastating parts of downstate New York, eastern part of New Jersey, but also doing considerable damage in the Hudson Valley. The most recent round of hurricanes in the Gulf Coast is another stark reminder that plenty of experts contend climate change and other weather factors are likely going to lead to more powerful storms, not only in the southern states, but throughout the Northeast, including the Hudson Valley. Communities have not done nearly enough to prepare. Here's our chance to get that emergency shelter, that community kitchen. And you're sort of nickel diamond a little bit. I believe if you look at this budget closely, you should be able to come up with some money to fund this wonderful project. As far as the regional shelter goes, we've authorized an engineer to do a plan for a generator yeah. to become a well, uh, regional yeah, shelter. I, I know that's part that of the plan. Was, that was part of the borrowing we did for the well, heating system. I understand that. So we are moving forward with that. Well, well but if you had to shelter, you're going to need some type of kitchen and something to help them to serve food. That was the whole idea behind it. I believe the whole idea, the yes. original idea about the kitchen was to be a commercial kitchen, to mm -hmm. have people come in and be able to that make their products. Number one priority was emergency shelter. And it's going to happen, you know. And we've made some progress with the kitchen. I mean, all, anything that was asbestos related has been taken out. I know. We're working on a plan to complete the ceiling. And I, last I knew, we were working with the Department of Health to move the kitchen forward. I've got the tax rate schedule. Are you close to the cap? I'm under it. Under it, by how much? $2,253. That's hard for me to believe. Well, you cannot tell by looking at the tax rate schedule. I, to figure I understand out what the that, cap and I is. believe there's. I know you have that form. I don't have that. It's uh, a formula that's on right. the controller's website. Okay. You plug in the numbers, and it tells you what your amount that you cannot go over. That's 1.84 percent over your tax levy for last year. Right. And what that amount this year is 1,539.896. Our tax rate for the town is your general and your highway. Last year it was 2.47 or 2.48. 2.47, I think on our taxes it came out 2.48. Well, if you look at the tax rate schedule, yep. there's actually a formula to divide up, because on your tax bill, the highway is built into the town? General. Right. Yeah, so that's what I so said. So there's, there's a, f no, yes, on your tax bill, there is a county and then a town rate. Yes. That town rate includes the highway. 
the so highway. So in order to figure specifically what the current tax rate is for the highway, there's a formula you have to use, which I used, and that is the highway rate that's on here based on the formula. Exactly what I said. The town tax that we get is a combination of the general and the highway. And for 2017 budget, it, they add those two together, it's 2.47. I believe on our tax bill, it came out to 2.48, okay? That's adding 1.32 and 1.15, it's 2.47. Your implied rate is what you're looking at this year is the 1.22, which shows me almost an 8% decrease and a 1.18 for the highway, a 2% increase, to come up to a 2.40. So if you were paying $2.48 a thousand last year, we're paying $2.40 this year. So you've got certainly got extra money. If you look at your taxable assessed value, that's a big number. Big number. Oh, I did that, that's what the county gave me. That's right. Absolutely correct. Right. Bear with me. It's big numbers. I've seen them. In 2009, the taxable assess rate, you should write this down. I have all the budgets going all the way back. I'll write it down. Damien, maybe James. 2009. 559 million 909 comma 070. So 559 million. In 2017, <laughs> that went to 571 million. Okay? In eight years, what did I say that came to? About, oh, I had it figured. Uh, 60. Uh, th 30, I apologize. I had as many meetings as I used it, I guess. Um, what I'm saying, in eight years, it went up about 60, about $11 million. From 2017 to the 2018, we've got 614 million. There's $43 million more on this tax roll. That's partly because the assessor did his job and their silo ridge is being built, okay? So if you have that large an increase in the tax roll, there obviously has to be some extra money. So I think you need to do some math because I believe there needs to be more meetings on this and more information put out to the public and into the board because $43 million is a big chunk. Well, the board has all the information I have. That's what these books are. But you haven't had a meeting to discuss it. No, I tried to have a meeting, but okay. that's not saying between, I mean, we're not adopting the budget to the I 16th, understand that, but so this, we is, have time this is my have only meetings. chance to really speak. Well, okay, and what else? Whatever? Is there, no, I said, and what else? what else? Is there anything else? What else? No, thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any other comment in the budget? Make a motion to close the public hearing to the 2018 preliminary budget. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Make a motion to return to regular meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Public comment? Was Wayne again.
I just want to bring up the um, proposals, selection day coming right around the corner. Um, and there's been very little in the paper or locally sp spoken about. Um, proposal number one, and these are all going to be on the back of your ballot. Hopefully they tell you at election time to turn over your ballot. Um, there's a, uh, they want to do a constitutional convention. And uh, there's a request to do this. I've done quite a bit of research on it. Um, almost all the unions are certainly against this. The Association of Towns came out with an article against it. What it appears to me, I'm certainly no expert, um, it looks to me like there are going to be delegates. An average person is not going to be able to be a delegate. You have to be a well-connected politician, a well-connected businessman with a lot of money. It's almost like running for a state senator or a representative position. You need to get thousands of names on your petition. These folks are going to get $80,000 a year to sit around um, to do what our legislators should do. Uh, I believe it's a waste of money, a waste of time. And like I say, all the unions are certainly against it. There's been some wonderful letters to the editor that will speak better than I can in the Poughkeepsie paper. Uh, very few folks for it. They, had, they just had a, um, a meeting over at New Paul SUNY. They had two professors, sort of a dialogue back and forth. And um, I think mostly the consensus was it's to vote no. There's two other state proposals I won't go into. And the, the one from Amenia. Uh, do you approve of the town of Amenia's town board adoption of a local law entitled local law providing for the appointment of a sole appointed assessor? Um, we tried to pass this three years ago. It was voted down. And I, and I understand a lot of the reasoning, but I'm still in favor of an elected position. I understand there's nobody running. Uh, my big fear of this, I believe in home rule. I believe, I know for a fact, if this is voted, it's changed to appointed, you'll never go back to an elected position. I think there's a, I not think, I know there's a movement within the counties. They're trying to centralize many of our positions. They're trying to centralize our, our justice court, our court systems. They want to eliminate the town courts. They want to have two systems set up through Dutchess County. They want to do the same thing with our building inspectors. There's even talk of the town clerks. They want to eliminate town clerks and have maybe uh, two or three spots in the county where you go for all your filings. I'm so against that. You know, again, I believe home rule. And I think there's just something about a local person um, that is, is in contact with the local residents. Um, it's just something that would be missed. I try to do as good a job as I can. And recently, well, in the last year, I have found a couple buildings that weren't on a tax roll. Now, it's, it was a mistake. It was an error. But as I drive around and I look at things, I say, you know, I don't remember seeing it, so I went back and I checked. I've also recently, in the last six months, I found an apartment complex that had eight apartments, was listed at four. I had another multifamily that was listed at four and it had six. I don't think somebody from Pleasant Valley or Poughkeepsie is going to be that familiar to know. I found a farm that had, I was looking at the ags, and I looked at the garage and I said, there's an apartment. There's been an apartment there. Never had a building permit or a CO. Apartment and a very nice swimming pool that was never put on. So these are things that a local person would know about. The STAR program, if you move out of your house and rent it, you don't qualify. I talk to people, you know, just in conversation. Maybe I'm talking to a guy that mows lawns. He says, you know, such and such, they're not living in anymore. They rented it out. 
you know, that's, that's having a local contact. And um, the other thing that came, the Millerton News finally came out with it on the, this week's edition about the assessor position. And uh, she asked me what was gratifying about the job. And uh, I said, you know, it's helping the seniors. The STAR program is very, very confusing. The state is changing it. Some of these folks are living, especially widows, single parents, they're living on eight to $14,000 a year of Social Security. And they, you know, they come in to get help filling out these forms. That's where a local person knows these people, will sit down and help them. So that's just my point on all of that. Thanks for your time. Uh, Wayne, may I just, just add one quick thing to, to your points there? Uh, on the first point regarding the Constitutional Convention, um, I just want to summarize that without opinion, um, so keep me honest here, but just to give a, a little bit of background um, that wasn't included in your statement, uh, the New York State Constitution provides for the ability every X number of years, I don't know offhand, 20, whether it was 20, 20 years. 20 years. Uh, to put this question on the ballot out to the voters as to whether or not to open up the state constitution uh, for review, amendment, discussion, changes. Um, and frequently it is voted down, and that's just what that proposition is. So regardless of how you feel on it, I would encourage everyone to do their research, read a little bit about it. It is uh, a relatively unique provision. Um, uh, I'm not saying that I disagree with anything uh, with what you said, but it's worth people going out and, and doing some research. Uh, and on the second point, you know, we've had this discussion previously. Um, we, to be clear, we do not have, uh, we currently have the assessor as an elected position. We do not have anybody running for that. Uh, the town board, uh, and jump in here if I misspeak for anyone on the board here, but we, we felt like we needed to do something so that that position was not uh, vacant. Um, it does not necessarily mean that we have to hire somebody from Pleasant Valley for Poughkeepsie, uh, but it does uh, mean that we are required to hire somebody that meets the state qualifications. Thank you. I have to say I'm surprised because this is about the first time in 30 years that I totally agree with Mr. Uvard. I think he was elo eloquent in his explanation of the problem of counties that are trying to centralize. This centralization means control and at the long run it goes away from the grassroots. So I think that uh, he was correct and uh, Every other point you made, I agree with. I want to say this about the assessor. You've heard from me before on this. It's entirely possible to vote that down, and within a year, you'll have candidates locally available that are people who live here. And I know several who are thinking about it. The turnaround was too quick for them to be able to get out of whatever professional situations or educational situations they were in to, to, to move for that. And it, I think you will find that you will have local candidates. And I agree that we should vote no on that, on that resolution. Sorry, one, may I, Sharon? <laughs> I'll regarding right after you. regarding the uh, the move to centralize services and positions, uh, that is correct. There is, uh, I wouldn't call it a mandate, but there is uh, strong encouragement coming all the way from the governor to do so. Uh, there are also incentives for towns to collaborate with neighboring towns or with the county to share services, and that directly affects our budget. And, and it slightly, it could. I mean, I'm just. Philosophically, that move. Could you please go up to the microphone? Well, then, if you're done. Sharon's point was that it's different uh, operations can be shared to save costs, and um, but just to just to make a point that there is there is uh, an interest for at both the county and the state level to uh, do a bit more sharing and consolidation of uh, services. Sharon notes it's different. 
I'm done. Okay. Is, there, is there any other public comment? Okay, we do have, uh, it's not on the agenda, but I do have a um, building report. Uh, please find October's monthly report for the building department. We have issued eight new building permits totaling $35,990 along with four renewals at $700. We're continuing with certificate of occupancy searches and for this month we did seven searches totaling $675. And fire inspections, two fire inspections of $100 bringing the total for the month $37,465. Uh, the total for the year to date from the, uh, for building permits is $119,936.55. Sarah, highway report. How you doing? I'd just like to touch on the last storm, the, the rainstorm that we had. I think the power company was very, very slow reacting. And I think it's a real good thing we didn't have a big, big storm. Now, there was people without power. And on town roads, we only had three, three roads that were closed. And it took them forever to get there to get the power back up. So I think the power company was very, very slow. And, well, they, uh, they heard about it on our municipal calls. Because well, it didn't do any good. Well, it couldn't do any good if they didn't have the people. They started pulling from, like uh, I believe they said they were pulling from Elmira. I don't know what happened with this storm because usually, NYSEC, if there's a storm coming, there's a, a, a pre-meeting with the municipal uh, supervisors and mayors. There was no pre-meeting for this. We had, I mean, we were well into the storm and the power outages before there was a municipal meeting. Um, that we that you attended the, that one with me, and all the supervisors were screaming. It was a lot worse uh, south of us because there were many schools that were closed and had no power, and um, there were a lot of places running on generators. But no, they did not. Um, I don't know how many calls I had to make to DOT and NYSIC and the NYSIC officials just to get Route 343 open. And in fact, I even had, um, you know, D D Dutchess County 911. They were working with NYSIC too and said, you need to get over there and open that. It's where our ambulance, that's our main route to Sharon Hospital where our ambulance is. So NYSIC is going to be looking at all this and see how, you know, they can do a better job next time. But I'm going to make sure that it's a critical facility. Um, notation for them that that road has to be open and if, you know, if it's closed they need to send resources there right away. Yeah, on, on town roads <clears throat> we had one on Railroad Avenue and we had one on Flint Hill. The Flint Hill one just got reopened yesterday. I mean, uh, I've never seen them respond this slow, never. And just thank God it was a small storm. That was no big storm. Yeah, it was it was totally different and totally inadequate. I mean, you just had to keep calling and calling and say, you know, you need to get this road open now, yesterday. So, you know, the, there was a slow response, I agree. But I will be following up with NYSIC and we will be having follow-up meetings to see how we can make the response better than it was. Right. It had nothing to do with the highway departments because we're right on top of it. It was just the power company showing up. Mm -hmm. so, do we know the why second note? Uh, no. We have a truck. Mm -hmm. They didn't have enough people. Sorry. Go ahead. We have a truck. It's a 2000 International six wheel dump truck, sander plow. It needs to be replaced and it needs to be replaced now. Uh, in my capital project fund, I talked to the bookkeeper. She says we have 205,000, which I disagree with. I think it's no, too that didn't count. She didn't count the two CDs. You had a money market. Fund. So it should be 275, 275,000. Yeah. yeah, there's two. You have two individual CDs that, yeah. so anyway, that are also highway. I'd like to get uh, board permission to start shopping around for that truck and get one on order because uh, it's going to take probably eight months to get a truck. Now that's a dump truck? Yeah, it's a dump truck, plow, sander. 
Uh, it's going to be around 200,000 as an estimate. And uh, we, we need one. We need one as soon as possible. But it's going to be at least eight months. Um, that's what I'm figuring. Okay, make a motion to authorize the highway superintendent to look at bids for what type of truck, Stan? It's a six wheel dump truck. I don't really know what make it's going to be yet. Well, it's, it's okay, a six it'll wheel be under dump the, truck. It'll be under the state contract or a county bid. It'll be probably second? international or MAC. Okay. Second. Yeah. Council Morris? Yes. Council Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. Supervisor Prody? Yes. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions or anything? Or? No. So you have to do you have to do a formal bid for that. No, I'm gonna get it off the state bid or the county bid. Oh, okay. I'll just save us some work. And see money. which one, see which one is better. Right. I've been talking to dealers since probably August. Mm-hmm. Uh, Okay, let us know. I'll let you know. That's it. So Stan, I just want to say thanks. As a victim on Railroad Avenue, again, I mean, as soon as you guys found out, you guys were there that day and cleaned it up our road and, you know, made it passable. Uh, so that storm was pretty scary on, you know, Sunday night when it came and the booms and the trees falling and the <coughs> lines falling. It was... Was it from wind? Excessive wind? Or? The, the wind that came through with the storm, it knocked the tree down, which then went over the power lines. Which broke a telephone pole. Which broke the telephone <laughs> pole. I mean, it was a, the whole road a was a mess. But as soon as they found out that morning, they were there clearing before lunch and working. So thank you to you and the whole crew. Well, Very they nice. were clearing whenever they could. But one of the problems they had, and one of the things we brought up to NYSIC, is that you need to get people out here to turn the breakers off. Right. So that our highway people can get to the trees and take not them down. Executed, yeah. But you know, even if they're not going to repair the pole, repair the wire, they need to tear in the breakers off, so that the juice is gone and you know we can clear our roads. So yeah, that that's one of the things, um, you know, the other supervisors brought up as well, and that's one of the things we're going to be working with um, NYSEC to get a better plan to turn. The electricity off, so you can, you know, so we can get the roads clear and the trees cleared away, cleared away. Yeah, I believe the power went out around 11 o'clock on the railroad, or so. But the, the problem is, is not just with the storms. I mean, this is an ongoing issue with this one particular parcel. Um, it would be also just general maintenance on behalf of NYSEG with their lines. Mm -hmm. They, I mean, they were there because of issues that seem to be going on and on with the same parcel with the hanging trees. But they were there during the night, because by the time I got there in the morning, around 7 or 7.30, they came. the breakers were pulled on that one, so we could. They were there the week before, too. <laughs> we yeah. were out for two days, so. Okay. Yeah, one of the things that, I mean, when, you know, when we did get somebody here, we got a local group. You know, they were from Brewster, so they were familiar with this area. So, um, you know, once I got them to 343, I mean, they were, you know, familiar with all the other streets too. But it just, you know, it, it just was a very, very poor response. But uh, 343 was like five o'clock Sunday until around 11 o'clock Tuesday. And that, that's the main route. <laughs> I couldn't believe that. Yeah. And and they they, they listened power. to me. I mean, I had everybody, you know, going after NYSIC, so. <laughs> Even, you know, emergency response and everybody and I just kept calling it's till they got tired of listening to me and they went and fixed the darn thing, so <laughs> but I told them, I mean, that's that's going to be they're gonna have to put that down as has to be clear. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> okay, supervisor's report. Um, the town of Amenia was invited to participate in a land use leadership alliance training program, which I signed, um, I signed up for. Uh, the other, um, the uh, zoning board of appeals and planning board and um, actually anybody was invited to do it. Uh, the program began on October 20th 
in Poughkeepsie and it continues this Friday, November 3rd. I'll also be going November 17th and December 1st. Uh, what uh, some of the things they covered were um, land use system, board roles and, respons roles and responsibilities. They discussed the role of the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Board and at one point, you know, an applicant would go to either. And also they, uh, there was a, a town that went through the whole comprehensive planning and they, uh, you know, talked about their, um, route, how long it took them to do it and their approach, which was very interesting. Um, they also gave us a homework assignment where they asked each community to please submit a uh, site address that you think could be a potential location for a town center <clears throat> concept. So what I did, excuse me, <coughs> was, um, Losing my voice. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, was to um, send them <coughs> a copy of our main street grant. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so I, uh, I'll be meeting with them on Friday. If I get my voice back, I'd like to speak to the um, appointed assessor. <clears throat> Most towns and cities have an appointed assessor. The only towns that don't are the town of Northeast, Dominia, <clears throat> Pine Plains, and Milan. They still have an elected assessor. Um, our current assessor, <clears throat> ran three years ago, ran for a unexpired term when our beloved assessor, Ron Cazzoli, passed away. So there was three years left on the term. That term ends <coughs> on December 31st, 2017. There are no candidates on the ballot for the next six year term, which will start January 1st, 2018. The proposition on the ballot says, do you approve of the Town of Amenia Town Board's adoption of a local law entitled, a local law providing for the appointment of a sole appointed assessor pursuant to Article 3 of the Real Property Tax Law? The Town Board voted unanimously to, unanimously to pass a resolution for the Town Board's adoption of the local law to change from an elected assessor to appointed. The local law was made subject to a mandatory referendum, which is why it's on the ballot, and all taxpayers will be voting on it. The appointed sole assessor before appointment must meet minimum qualification standards approved by the New York State Real Property Education Services Department. Voting yes for the change to a sole appointed assessor would put a certified experienced and knowledgeable person in the assessor role until the appointed assessor term ends on 9-30-19. There's no candidate on the ballot. <clears throat> so what will happen if it stays elected and there's no appointed, then in January, the town board will have to find an assessor to appoint. And according to real property law, we can only appoint that assessor temporarily for three months, which is what we had to do when Ron Gazzoli passed away. So we had to appoint an assessor for three months. When the three months was up, we had to find another assessor to appoint. Now for one of those appointments, we used um, the assessor from the town of Northeast. She was kind enough to do it. And the second assessor we used for the second three month period was um, 
Kathy Myers, who was the former director of real property for the county, who had came out of retirement to come here and be our assessor for three months. And you couldn't have had anybody else, even though she did not live here, you couldn't have had anybody more qualified than she because she taught the assessors. And she knew the very complicated uh, software that an assessor uses. So this is where we are. We have no candidate for a six-year term. Will, if there will be candidates eventually, well, what do we do in the meantime? We need an assessor. There's a lot that needs to be done between January and March, because that's when all the exemptions come in and they all need to be filed and they all need to be filed correctly. So you need to have someone who knows what they're doing. Now, what will happen if the appointed assessor goes through is that the president of the assessor associations will let every, all the educated, certified assessors in the county and other counties know that there is an opening in the town of Amina. And that assessor, you know, will present themselves to the town board. But even before we can appoint that assessor, that assessor has to be approved by the New York State Department of Real Property. Be, to, and because they have to meet certain educational requirements. So it's a highly regulated position, uh, regulated by the Office of Real Property. So this is what, you know, what will happen if we change from elected to appointed. Someone from that pool will be appointed to be an assessor in the town of Amina. They will have the education and the experience needed in order to fulfill that position. So I just wanted to make sure people understood um, what the whole issue is. <coughs> Town clerk report. Good evening. The monthly share um, has been remitted to the supervisor in the amount of $423.25. At the last special meeting, minutes of September 7th and the 19th were circulated to the board. And since then, they've also received the October 27th special meeting. Has all board members had the opportunity to review? One was a correction, right? The last one was a correction. We noted um, after speaking with Judy, she um, pointed out that there, um, uh, you went from three members to two members. So I wanted to um, detail that in a little better because you, there was no motion to close the meeting. So you might still be in the meeting the other night. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was my impression that the meeting ended when we didn't have a quorum. And the meeting continued um, and interviewed the last candidate. So what I did was after speaking and, and she, because um, there was no vote taken. Um, when no, we all we did was interview. So um, I recirculated those today after her and I had the opportunity to discuss further. So, and last uh, meeting I neglected to include September 7th. It just wasn't part of that pile. So I realized it was an email. So. It first presents September 7th. We'll go one at a time. Uh, September 7th is when all five were present. Has everybody read the minutes for September 7th? I believe I, that's the one we made the... The correction? The correction. I don't have it in front of me, so... Uh, I just don't remember what. I think you pointed out was sir, the correction? That was the 14th. No, what happened was I didn't have it part of the packet. Oh, you didn't have it, okay. No, so that's why this went out last week, because I can't put the other ones on until I get 
the oldest one, so that way they oh, stay. Oh, no, I, yeah, I did read that. I, you read that one? Yeah. Okay. So we can, well. Yeah. We can so make a motion to accept the minutes of September 7th. I'll second. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Purdy? Yes. Okay, and on October 19th, uh, Mike was absent. And that was our um, last meeting where we approved everything, we had public hearings. And the commotion that we approved the October 19th, 2017 minutes. I read them. Oh, I just need a second. I have to look at you because you're the only one that's like right down there. I don't mean to keep staring at you. I'm just waiting for a second. response. Okay, Jim, thank you. <laughs> Councilman Morris. Yes. Councilman Gutierrez. Yes. Councilman Doyle. Yes. And Supervisor Purdy. Yes. And then the last one is the one that was uh, recirculated from Friday's special meeting. So uh, before we vote on this, just one quick question then. Sure. So we did discuss when, uh, when Vicky left, we ass we assumed that that was the close of that meeting. That's was there a vote? No, we didn't vote on anything. Vote on anything. So, um, <coughs> but you continued you, and you interviewed the last candidate. Well, right, we completed because, the interview because we started it. Uh, and then for that third candidate, we agreed to all interview them on our own. So Victoria and I did that then. And I welcome comments. Unfortunately, it was not televised. It wasn't recorded. Um, I can only take off of from the notes that were presented to me. Um, so we did three interviews was pretty much it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's ultimately what it is. I mean, there was no votes. And the reason why there was a correction is because she indicated that there was a motion to open the meeting. And then... Um, in her text message to me, she had given me names of who made the motion to close the meeting and who seconded that, but then there was no roll call. And then that really didn't take place. There was no motion made by. So um, I showed her what I had sent from what I had typed up over the weekend. And then when we were further discussing it, she says it wasn't that there was a formal motion to close because there were just you and Supervisor Prody. So I mean, I welcome any comments. Yeah, I mean, what's what's presented here is all accurate. I just had a okay. question about procedure. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think that it was a little bit of a unique situation, but you both consented to close it. I think which we did, and, that, and it states that. Yeah, so it's a, that's sufficient. There's just no, there is no roll call. Like there was no, there's no roll call. They they continue to the end of the meeting. If I could just see that from yours. So it's the, um, the entire minutes that I'm presenting is three board members were present, met and interviewed three candidates for the open custodian position. 6.05, Vicki Doyle left the meeting. Council member Gutierrez and Supervisor Priority interviewed the third candidate. Interview completed at 6.40, at which time the meeting ended. Uh, right, so. Pretty so much. That's, that's why I, I had changed it because originally in her text message, she had presented a name of the two names who she thought made the motion to close it. So I did that correction because there really was no roll call. Yeah. So I don't want to show that there was a roll call when there was no quorum to do the roll. So. I understand that. Thank you. <laughs> uh, make a motion to accept the minutes of the October 27th meeting. Second. Councilman Morris. Abstain. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Prody? Yes. Also, this evening, we have one snow bid. Pass the envelope down. Now, uh, this time, the snow bids were redone with the specification showing the date of November 1, 2017 through May 1, 2018, and then also a rate for October 1, 2018 through May 2019. We had one bid received.
Okay, the November 1st to May 1st is $30,000 and the October 1st, 2018 to May 1st, 2019 is 30,000. Which is what you had asked for. <clears throat> The same company? Yes, Kendrick Property. So the only thing that I recall is that you had said that the, you heard from contractors that the um, additional specification that we had made is what is costing the extra money. The sand and pet friendly ice melt melting material that won't damage the concrete. No, I, I, I spoke with him. Mm -hmm. Again, when he came in, yes, on Wednesday, just before the due date time, mm -hmm. and um, you know, because he commented on, you know, our sidewalks and how the state's always pushing them on, and what he had done last year, he was always doing his best to stay up on it. So every time that they would go here, you know, then the state comes, and then he has to go back through and mm -hmm. clean it back up again because you know, they've just done their bit. Um, his, you know, his thing was having the manpower, ensuring that they're always here and. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know if anybody in the audience wants to make comments on Kindred, who they're working, how they worked with them last year. I mean, he's the only one that's bid. He was our, our award. I believe he did a real good job last year. Okay. I, know, I, well, I wasn't trying to put you on the spot, Stan, but I just well, knew that. We worked with them a couple of different times, and they did, they did a, good, a good job. I know one thing that he had suggested was to have a multi-year contract because he is getting the equipment to meet our needs here um, from the actual equipment itself to the manpower. So that's... Makes sense from a business perspective to know whether or not they're gonna need to, you know, have the people and the, and the equipment available to do it because it's a big job to do it all at once, have the whole village and uh, hamlets open up Uh, and just to review the bid, when the dates were January 1 through December 31st, 2018, the last bid, the total amount was? Time it was twenty nine thousand eight hundred. So now it's just an even. This was the first time he submitted. It's actually gone up. The two hundred dollars. Twenty nine eight. It's just evened it out. So it would be the same two years back to back rather than showing an increase. You know, And the year before was the 35, which started in January. And then we had the storm. I'll make a motion that we accept the bid of $30,000 for November 1, 2017 to May 1, 2018, and no October 1, 2018 to May 1, 2019. Second. Councilman Moore, yes. discussion. Sorry. Uh, sorry, so just counting months, if we do this 30,000 for essentially eight months of coverage, um, when we had the bid start at the calendar year and end on the calendar year end. Uh, 
which it comes out to be the same for 2018 through 2019 for that season because it's October, November, December, and then five months in mm -hmm. 20. Well, I don't know. I'm counting wrong. It's not through the end of May. It's the beginning of May, so that's four months. That's seven months. I did my math wrong, sorry. I think they're basically saying each season. Now through May and next year, you know, the snow season for 2017 18 and the snow season 2018 19, basically. Yeah. Okay. It's the same difference. I mean, he's. No, I was doing my math wrong. I was counting May as a month of coverage, but it terminates on May 1st, so I have answered my own question. Okay. Sorry. Roll. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilman Doyle? Yes. The Reserve Party? Yes. Okay. And I am advertising currently for um, many open positions. I just want to let everybody know that I did receive um, a a volunteer application from Vern Fish for the reappointment and the Board of Assessment Review. As a reminder, that is one of those positions that ends in September. Their, their year is just a little different than ours. Mm -hmm. um, and he is the only one that I've received. And what is the term, too? Um, Five-year terms. So it's September... 2017 to September 2022. Make a motion to appoint, reappoint Burn Fish to the Board of Assessment Review for the term, for his next term, five year 30. term. A second. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Councilwoman Doyle? Yes. Supervisor Purdy? Yes. Um, as you did have, as we talked about the minutes from the last special meeting regarding custodian, I didn't know if you needed me to bring that up during my report or if that's going to be a calendar, um, an agenda item at our next meeting. The custodian? The custodian. We're going to discuss that during next executive session. Okay. So then that's good because then it brings it to the Everybody's waiting to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. All right, here in the town of Amenia on December 2nd. Believe it or not, we're already starting to talk Christmas. Boy Scouts are selling their wreaths for $15. Please support your local Boy Scouts. They will be here at the Amenia Town Hall December 2nd, beginning at 10 a.m. I do know that they're here until they sell out. So they're great. It's a great fundraiser for them. Support your local Boy Scouts. Also, your BFW. On Sunday, November 5th, is going to be having their breakfast, first breakfast of the season. Uh, Veterans Appreciation Day held at VFW. The do uh, post 5444, 3422, Route 22, Town of Amenia. Address of Dover Plains. Read the uh, prices and time oh, sure. frame. Sorry. So adults, <laughs> adults, adults are eight dollars. Seniors are seven dollars. Children are five dollars. Twelve years and under. They have your eggs, pancakes, hash, home so fries, bacon, sausage, toast. It's actually a really good breakfast. Mm -hmm. We go, we go every month. That when they have it. Starts at. Starts at seven a.m. And ends at eleven a.m. Mm -hmm. Good breakfast. Uh, something that's coming up um, at the VF, uh, FDR President Library in Hyde Park, Veterans Appreciation. As we all know, November is our veterans holidays and celebrations. These are all announcements that are posted on our website. Support Wasake Fire Company. They're having a special turkey bingo. Friday, November 17th at the Wasake Firehouse. Doors open at 5.30, bingo will begin at 6.30, and the admission is $2. They are going to have refreshments available. All this turkey and holiday wreaths, which will bring us to the fun part of our local parade. Mina Fire Company will be holding their sixth annual Parade of Lights Friday, December 1st, beginning at 6 p.m. Save the date. Get your wagons, your tractors, what your time? trucks. Six. Six p.m. So uh, meet at the Amenia Firehouse at 36 Mechanic Street beginning at 5 o'clock. 
and will take off promptly at 6. Um, the route this year is ch has changed. We're going to be going from Mechanic Street, Route 343, across the light onto 44, making a left onto Broadway, left onto Broadway Ave, across onto Old Route 22, right onto mm -hmm. Railroad, and ending back at the firehouse to visit with Santa. And that concludes my report for this month. Committee reports. Um, uh, Michelle is going to speak. Hi, I'm Michelle Sowagy, and I'm with the uh, uh, Town of Amenia Recreation Commission. And we had our last official bus trip. Uh, in October, just a couple weeks back there, we went to Crookers. We had 43 people attend. All of our trips were basically sold out um, for everything. We had like 50, 43, what, I mean, we just filled the bus right up. And so it was a wonderful year. Everyone had a great time. Uh, they were very happy about it. So that brings us to the holiday. And the Christmas party is scheduled for Wednesday, December 13th at the Pond Restaurant. And it's uh, $40 per person to attend. And you have a choice of prime rib, chicken marcella, or flounder franchise. And a uh, brownie sundae is our dessert. Uh, we're going to have uh, a musician music there, so there'll be music, dancing, and some little games and stuff, and door prizes. We're going to have a really, really great time. Uh, if you wish to attend, it's on the it's on the TV, but you can call me at 845-877-9430 uh, and let me know you're interested in coming. I already have a list of people who are interested in coming, so please get on the list. And one of the things I have to explain to people, <clears throat> as much as we love everybody who attends our trips and our parties and stuff, the bus is paid for by the town of Armenia for our Armenia seniors. So they will get the first seats on the bus. I know other people like to come from, from Millerton or a little bit because they have friends or this or that. And the Millerton people will drive themselves and I already have people who've already said they will drive themselves even from this area. But I just want people to understand that the Amenia seniors have the first choice of the seats and it's 50 seats on the bus. So um, that's the best I can say to you. Uh, if there's an available uh, seat because you have a friend uh, or a cousin who lives in uh, Sharon, Connecticut or someplace like that, that they will be picking up the bus in Amenia. I would have to say I have to put Amenia seniors first. That even goes for people in Dover who might have friends in Dover. I'm sorry, but I must, it's 50 seats. And I already have 30 people requesting to go. And the checks are coming in now. So uh, I want everyone to come. You can carpool. There's no problem with that. You can carpool and come on up and, and have a great time. It would be wonderful. Last year we had 55 people. So there's no problem with you coming if you carpool. I'm very happy to have you come. And we all are. And it's going to be a great, great time uh, with door prizes and music and dancing and all kinds of f fun. So uh, once again, thank you all very much. And thank you to all the seniors who supported us through this whole year. And thank you to the town board for all your support for the uh, Armenia seniors. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other committee reports? Um, the enhancement committee met at 5.30 on Tuesday, October 17th. We went over the planting plan for Armenia and we'll be uh, uh, putting in a, an order in advance from Sharon Greenhouse and we're going to do a cleanup on Saturday at 9 a.m. at Fountain Square for in preparation for Veterans Day the following Saturday um, so November 4th is the cleanup at 9 a.m. and then the following Saturday November 11th is Veterans Day so we want to make it as um, attractive as we can for that ceremony, it'll be, uh, it's always on the 11th day, 11 o'clock, 
11th uh, wow. hour uh, to, um, and I hopefully, Victoria, you'd be there to yes, be there. help us with that. Absolutely. Great. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I think that's all I have. I think the CAC did meet, and um, I've forgotten what we talked about. But we met on October 18th, 2017. Uh, we, we paid tribute to Arlene, talked about Kent Hollow status, Trail to the Train, the Watershed Roundtable uh, meeting that we had on October 26th here at the Town Hall, which we had at least two of us from the town of Amenia, Dave Reagan and myself, and we had the other towns represented as well. We have a watershed roundtable. Uh, actually, the CAC, CACs from all over uh, the county are meeting at uh, tonight at Farm and Home Center. So we'll be giving a report about Amenia's um, activities. And uh, we also spoke about the rain garden and meeting with HVA's Mark, Mike Stravinsky and Marie Grace about the Pragmites leaping over and um, invading our garden and what we can do to try to um, minimize their um, takeover of the lovely native plants that we, we planted. So um, more on that as we get more information about that. That's all I have. Okay. Um. The resolution for WSP construction inspection amendment, did you want to speak to that, Genevieve? Sure. Um, so at the <clears throat> last couple meetings, the board has discussed a motion to retain WSP cells mm -hmm. for construction inspection uh, services that was not formally included in its contract. This mm -hmm. is in regards to the uh, trail to the train project. Um, and in order for the board to proceed, um, it needs to accept the current proposal, which is for $135,000. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of money, and so obviously there's some concern. Um, you know, we, the board wants to fully understand the breakdown of what that includes. Um, this project has been going on for quite some time, <clears throat> since at least 2011. Um, WSP cells has been involved the entire time. And given that this is a federally funded project, um, there's very strict requirements um, under DOT's grant. And so they, if the board does not agree to go with WSP cells, it would have to go out to bid. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a very cumbersome process. Um, and it will be, I believe, quite expensive to do that as well. Um, so I did a little bit of investigation. Mm -hmm. I looked into uh, the chapter regarding the consultant procurement and administration mm -hmm. process um, and I've evaluated uh, closer what WSP cells is proposing. And the DOT did their own audit of the proposal and has approved that audit. And it also indicates that if the um, if the profit is within a 10% to 15% margin, then that's acceptable. And they have an 8% profit. So I think that given these facts, um, that even though it sounds like a lot of money, it's not coming from the taxpayers directly. It's, a, again, there's a grant. Um, so it's a federally funded project. And um, I think that the board could, should consider moving forward. Did the DOT approve this amendment? Yes. Yes. It did. Yes. I called. I called Dan Breyer after our meeting last time, and I tried to get an explanation of how they arrived at this figure. He told me it was a mathematical formula that basically you take the uh, the salaries, the direct salaries, and you multiply that times 111.22 percent, and you come out with the, the number. I didn't come out with that number. It was a different number. It would have been higher, uh, so I, I'm still not satisfied. I, I don't, I don't understand where this where this comes from. They have two overheads. They have field, which is the big one, 73,000, uh, or I'm sorry, it's it's down now. They reduced it from 164 to 135, uh, but um, 
there, there, there's also a, a, an office overhead for 4,861. I, I still don't understand uh, how they get this figure. And I'm not going to vote for it until I can understand it. So my understanding, um, I have a copy here, and I hope that this was shared with the board. It was indicated by Dan that it, it was, and I can circulate this. Um, but it was, it. Uh, it was a um, audit that was done by Parsons, Bickerhoff, Inc., and again, was approved by the DOT. And on page three, there is a field um, overhead breakdown, and you have office rent, uh, which is a little bit less, I think, than the the 3,000, which is currently proposed. And then you have things that would be included in the field overhead that include, for example, repairs and maintenance, computer supplies, reproduction, travel and related expenses, uh, communications, subscriptions. Uh, that's general, general overhead, though, that you're reading from, isn't it? Right, but that's, that is included. The, the language in this summary of Exhibit C of their current proposal is somewhat confusing, but I, I confirmed with him. And if you look at the, the total sum, it, it equals what is being proposed here. Um, and the fixed fee is their profit, and that's at 8%. So again, it falls within the criteria of the grant and has been approved. Uh, Genevieve, just to clarify something, uh, you said Parsons Brink, Brinkhoff, Brinkerhoff performed this audit. Parsons Brinkerhoff is WSP, so the, the audit. I'm sorry, it was by Deloitte, Deloitte, I believe right. Deloitte. Okay, thank you for clarifying um, that. And the, the statement here is a, I, I'm not actually sure what we're talking, because the figures here are, like the office rent figure is 2.4 million. I think we're looking at their. It's the percentage, though. When you look at the percentage of direct labor, that's the total, at the, at the very end, the total overhead, 111.22%. That's the field percentage that's indicated in the summary. And again, I don't have the mathematical equation that they used, um, but this is how it was explained to me by Mr. Breyer. Then what's the office overhead all about? We're paying that too. That I don't believe is included on this breakdown here. I think that's a separate cost. As I understand it, it's a three month project. Isn't that correct? Isn't that supposed to be the length of it? Yes. Yes? Mm -hmm. I don't know how you get that amount of money from field overhead. The way I'm reading it is that this first column is 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 their overall, their whole company's um, overhead. That's what, and then you know they've taken some disallowed costs out of that as not being directly related to this particular project. And then the total proposed is is sixty thousand, right? Versus Correct. what they had hoped for, which is 68,618. They've disallowed some of the costs. Wait, where are you seeing 60,000? Sorry. So, so the first column, if you go down to the bottom line, total general overhead, general. Yeah. The whole company, 68,000. That's that's 68 million. Then 68 million, sorry. And mm -hmm. then you look at the disallowed costs, and they've taken out 8 million of a disallowed costs, and then the total proposed is 60 million, and then of that, they're coming up with 75% and 110% and 112, at the bottom line, it's 111%. I don't know, I guess, I just, as, as I'm assuming that a percentage of their overall operations is getting charged to this project. In every aspect of this project, whether it's field or not, they're gonna be communicating with their base office, they're gonna be using faxes and employees to answer the phone, and that's just the formula that they have come up with for a project like this. And I know when we have grant-funded projects, we, at at Cary Institute, we have overhead, and we, we put it in. 
because that's what it costs to do business. Sometimes you allow it, sometimes you don't, but it's the cost of doing business. If you parse it out exactly what the trailer is costing and you know the direct, if they're called indirect expenses, you know, there are indirect expenses with every project. Does that make sense? Not to me. Well, Maybe. first of all, first of all, this was audited by the DOT and they accepted it. Second of all, we have already signed, the contract was already signed in 2011 for WSP to do the construction inspection. And I already gave you a copy of that. How did it come and about? Doreen explained to you what you what we would have to do. We would have to terminate WSP in order to bid someone else because we already the contract was already signed in 2011 to allow them to do that. And then you have to start a new selection process, which is outlined in this chapter six, that provides that. You have to advertise for consultants. They were sent all that information and twice. It, but I'm just explaining for the public too, which is how you know, complicated and I believe expensive that it would be. It's not like a, a normal bidding process. Um, you have to go through various um, entities to, to bid it and you have to include a whole laundry list of items. Um, so I just, I, I just want the board to understand that it's not a simple process. And since the contract was signed to have them do it and DOT already did their own audit on their cost, I guess DOT is wondering why we're not moving ahead with this. Because everything else is done. The, the DEC permit is complete. The high, I, we have the highway permit. Everything has been sent in a DET, DOT that they require. The only thing we're waiting on is the <clears throat> language in the easement, WTA's uh, response to the language in the easement. They d uh, just to update everyone on that, the MTA board did accept that at their Friday, October 27th meeting, and I'm just confirming logistics. Um, if they're gonna send us, I've requested two originals so the other, the, the only two things holding up the project are this, and since the MTA easement language has been accepted, it's only this. This has to be done and sent into the DOT, and it's the only th thing holding up the project going out to bid, because the bid specs are done also. Well, as far as I'm concerned, he still has not told us how he arrives at $61,150.13 for overhead field. And he also has a, a figure for office overhead of 123%, and that figure is $3,070.36. As I said last time, I don't understand it. And I, I understand the practical consequences, uh, that it could be expensive, but this is a, uh, a contractor who first came up with a uh, a proposal for this amendment of over $200,000, then went down to $165,000, and now it's down to $135,000. That to me is a big red flag in the first place when there's that much fat in it. So, I would like to take, I hadn't, I hadn't seen this until tonight, I'd like to take a look at it. I'd like to defer the vote for, until the next week meeting. Well, if we keep we can defer it to the 16th. The 16th, we do have to vote. All right. I'd also like to just get a sense from uh, Ms. Holsap Sopel at the DOT what a, a half a mile of trail over three months, you know, with construction inspection, what a typical cost might be. Not that she approves necessarily this particular thing, but what have other trails similarly? you know, constructed. This is not rocket science. They do lots of these trails, right? Well, you've right? been in touch with her. Did you ask I will, her that? No, I just thought that it would be, in fact, a helpful 
um, rule of thumb to know what if we're in the ballpark or if we're on the outset on the outside of what is a typical cost for three months worth of construction inspection is would that be helpful I'll be in touch with her again and see if she can give me a benchmark well this is the only thing holding up the trail going out to bed just so you know well did the rest of the board get a the detailed they have everything costs associated with all the parts of the did what? you all get the i asked for what, detailed the, the original contract or estimated costs for the final project as they designed it the final design mm -hmm. and i think that we all should be familiar with the line by line items before yeah. we go forward so and i needed to send it to you again I'll find it and send it to you again. Well, I can send it on because I asked it directly from WSP cell or cells or whatever their new name is, WSP. I can forward it on because I hadn't seen it before that I, I just asked them directly for it because it seemed to me that we hadn't seen it since. I haven't seen it at all. Okay. Well, everything they have sent me, I have sent on to you. So you need to go back through your emails and read them. Discussion, search for a new historian. Um, we need a new historian. Um, I know we've advertised, but I would just like to appeal to anyone out there if they are interested in the history of Amenia and would like to be the town historian to, you know, please contact me because, you know, we would like to talk to you. Are there any other, other matters? Um, we need to set up a budget workshop what works for everybody next week because we have to uh, adopt the budget on the 16th because it has to be adopted before the 20th and the 16th of our next meeting mm -hmm. how about thursday the 9th is anybody available Thursday the night yeah what time I cannot I'm sorry okay um, Wednesday 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 would work for me the 8th Wednesday the 8th mm -hmm. could also do it on election day it's <laughs> the day after election day <laughs> I can do it on Wednesday or what what about Monday? I, I won't be here Monday. We yeah. have the zoning review committee in here. But we can meet in the planning board room. Is it available now? But you're not here. Yes, it is. The planning board here. met there yes. last meeting. I will be out of town. It doesn't work for Jim. It's done. Jim's not here. No problem. Jim's not here. Wednesday, no. Thursday, and Friday, I can do it. I'm available all those days. Let's do it Wednesday then. Wednesday the 8th. What time? Any time after. I mean, you said you can't do the eighth, right? I can. I can do the eighth. You can do the eighth. I just. I'll be. Well, coming Thursday the ninth. You couldn't do. It. Thursday ninth. I can't do. Uh, Pick a time. I'll be coming from work, so honestly, seven or. Apologies. I know that's. Seven o'clock. I'll, I'll bring the pizza this time. Seven, seven o'clock. Seven o'clock okay. on the eighth. That'll be a budget meeting. Make sure you bring your books. Um, and is that uh, open to the public? Yes. It'll be advertised. Hmm. Any other public comment? Town board comments? Make a motion to go into oh, executive no, session have, unless you have something. I do have something. I am so sorry. But <coughs> let's see find it. It is about the um, shooting down in Wasaic. I have promised to bring that up and I've sent you, forwarded you some of the comments that I have had um, from residents in Wasaic. Damien, have you also received comments or? Uh, yes, some. Okay, so you know the comments have been going on. I just looked back in my 
shooting, yeah. Um, back in my emails, go back to July, I've gotten lots of them. The last one I got, I think I forwarded to everybody. I'm sorry, Victoria, if it didn't come, come to you because I, I, I used the wrong email address for you. I suggest that you call, dear Councilwoman Doyle, I suggest that you call the New York State in Dover Plains about the shooting range. I was almost a victim of police brutality because of a complaint about the noise. Would like to see my copy of their report, question mark. Wayne Uvard is aware of the problem and he has done nothing. The barber who cut my hair knows about the shooting range. Look what Silo Ridge has done to the Amenia Gun Club. That gun club never caused any problem until it became an annoyance to a big bunch of developers with a lot of money. Those guys on the hill with the shooting range are protected by the Second Amendment. The police will do nothing. You people on the Amenia board have been told that no one wants to live next to a shooting range. If you complain, you are accused of being a nut. Now the residents of Wasaic are the nuts. Would you like to sit on my porch on a nice day and listen to gunshots and random explosions? Wasaic may not be the high rent district of Amenia. We pay taxes and are entitled to the same quality of life as the rest of Amenia and Silo Ridge. Marty Grossman, resident. Miss Doyle is another one, Friday, October 27th. My name is Kim Fowler. I live on Benson Road in Wasaic. This is in regards to the excessive shooting and extreme explosions we have been dealing with for years. This is constant shooting that goes on for hours, multiple days per week. There is a series of explosions, not sure what they are, a cannon, dynamite. I've lodged complaints with the town and had no response whatsoever from the town. I have other neighbors who've complained as well as we've all discussed it in an effort to have, get some resolve. I wish I could get someone from the town to come down to Benson Road while this is going on and experience what we have been putting up with. It goes on and on and on. There are complaints from lots of residents. Um, I'll just say, you know, shooting, con here's somebody uh, who says shooting consists of multiple volleys of 10 shots most of the time. Intervals of a couple of minutes between volleys is the common pattern. Sometimes the shooter does a double tap patterns for many minutes. Many of my neighbors are really upset with this activity, which has been going on for years now in spite of our complaints. Um, here's another one. And, uh, so I wrote to Lori Mithin back in July. 11th, after 4th of July was a particularly, um, as you can imagine, episodic event in Wasik. Hi, Lori, could you provide me with a basic idea of what it takes for a town to enforce its noise ordinance? If it, takes, if it does take a professional to determine the dec decibels being emitted, can you provide a list of such professionals? Thanks, Vicki. Um, she wrote back and said, um, Enclosed, please find information regarding noise enforcement. Typically, decibel reading is performed by the town CEO or a local law enforcement. Um, so I have forwarded that on to Victoria, the articles that um, Association of Towns lawyer Lori Mithin recommended the town review to give us a sense of what other towns have been dealing with with enforcing town. Um, when did you send that? I just sent it today. Okay. So you'll see that. And my question to the board is whether or not you all feel it would be pertinent to ask uh, Jen to research this further and find out what we can do as far as enforcement. As far as I know, the only enforcement that has been done over the past few years was a letter written by our zoning enforcement officer on July 11th, 2017, he, he wrote to the offending property owner, <coughs> use of guns and explosives at this Route 22 location, to whom it may concern. Complaints have been recently filed with the zoning office of the town of Amini regarding the excessive noise from gunshots and explosives at this location on many occasions. As one nearby resident wrote in a statement, noise over the 4th, over the 4th of July was over the top, in quotes. The impact on nearby residents is unfavorable. Please be advised that the zoning law in New York State says that the level of small arms will not exceed 90 decibels for one hour out of a day or does not exceed 85 decibels for eight hours out of a day and a distance of 100 feet outside the real property boundary of the shooting area between the hours of 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. during all or any of such time period as the property owner of this location it is advised to be considerate of the surrounding area and neighbors as to the noise and hours of such disturbances in the nearby area. Thank you for your anticipated cooperation in this matter. 
and enclosed was a copy of the relevant New York State noise-related statutes and policies. <coughs> and shooting ranges is checked. Um, so, um, for the purposes of this section, shooting range shall mean an outdoor range equipped with targets for use with a firearms and shall include, but not be limited to, all rifle, pistol, and shotgun ranges. Uh, B, a weighted sound level shall mean the sound pressure level, blah, 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 blah. These are the um, definitions of, of the ways um, uh, pertaining to the shooting ranges. So I guess uh, in thinking about this, my first sense would be, you know, we did have um, Denise, our former attorney, look into this and come up with a lot of information but she never came up with a conclusion. It just was research that she did, but never came full circle to say, here's now is what your zoning enforcement officer should do or whatever. Um, that, that was my first thought is have Jen look at all the research that's already been compiled, give her Lori Mithin's articles, that's been compiled, and have her um, work with the zoning enforcement officer and find out what he needs to do his job if the town board so chooses to enforce not only its own laws but the state of New York's laws. Um, the other the, suggestion. The problem is our laws are, we don't have a law. We, we have, have an ordinance. sections that refer to noise. We Absolutely. have an ordinance. We have a noise ordinance and there is specific information in there. But at any rate, even if we had none, New York State says that residents have the right to the peaceful enjoyment of their property. That's my understanding. But maybe you can come up with something else and say, nope, it's every man for himself, and uh, deal with it yourself. So if that's our response, we need to be clear to the residents. We have a way of dealing with this, or we don't, period. I'm happy to look into that, and you know, we, we've had we have experience looking at these types of ordinances, and um, we looked at it when we were considering Silo's project as well. So um, I, I would like some more facts and um, certainly share that information that you have, but I think I can do that pretty efficiently for you. Is, uh, I'll make a motion that we authorize Jen to research this issue mm -hmm. and work with our zoning enforcement officer and the town board as needed to uh, provide feedback and resolve this issue. And perhaps um, give the town board um, some examples of how we could strengthen our current noise ordinance to more be more in line with, with the state law. A second. Councilman Morris? Yes. Councilman Gutierrez? Yes. Council Doyle? Yes. And Supervisor Purdy? Yes. That's it. So any other town board comment? Election day is coming up Tuesday. Wasag Fire is having a meatloaf meat afterwards. Okay. I'll be there. Go vote. I make a motion to go into executive session for medical, financial, credit, or employment history of a particular person or corporation or relating to appointment, promotion, demotion, dis discipline, or removal. The town clerk is excused. Second. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? 